Roasting. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about airflow in the roaster and utilizing airflow in the roaster and how different kinds of machines, different models of roasters use airflow differently. I can show you on the sample roaster, the Pre-1Z that I use, uh, we have the roasting chamber here. And there is an impeller down here in the body that's pulling air. And that's pulling air through the drum out the bottom here. These are the burners. These are the elements, rather, that heat the drum. The uh, impeller is pulling air through the face of the drum down the back of it along with it pulling out the chaff, which is collected here. So, how this utilizes the airflow, and especially in regard to uh, using quartz elements that are heating the drum, uh, that aren't entirely responsive, you have your little dial here that you can adjust, uh, but really it's best to set that at a, at a temperature that you'll be able to build enough energy. And what's gonna happen with your airflow then is that using the throttle here, which is attached to a paddle, which blocks on and off the airflow, restricts it, and you have, basically you can, you have a little bit of variation, but you have like a 50-50 split, and then an all the way closed setting. Um, in the all the way closed setting, what you're doing is you're trapping the energy produced by the elements in the drum promoting the roast. Now when you have it all the way open, what you're doing is you're promoting the flow of air through the drum, cooler outside air through the drum, uh, creating a more gentle environment. And this is a good strategy for during the first crack to make sure that you don't develop things too fast. Um, and once the crack gets rolling to open it up to about 50-50 and then to open it up all the way to clear the, uh, the chaff out of the roasting chamber actually but that super efficient uh, airflow allows you to control what the roast is doing uh, by either closing it off trapping energy promoting the roast or opening it up promoting the flow of air and creating a more gentle environment so you can prolong the roast or stretch it out now this is a similar concept to a smaller IR uh, burner roasters, infrared burner roasters, um, uh, the 12 and 24 and the, the 3 in the smaller tabletop version, in that uh, you again have your roasting chamber, your drum, and, under, and on each side of it, kind of cradling the bottom, you have rows of ceramic tiles that reflect the initial combustion, which is back here. Now, that reflected energy is very gentle, um, and I, I do appreciate how how gentle it is in terms of, of treating the beans and reducing scorching and whatnot. But again, uh, very unresponsive in terms of making adjustments to the energy source. Um, but this is made up, once again, with airflow. In the case of the Diedrich, there's airflow, again, out the back of the roast, very much like the Pre-1Z, to an impeller box down below. So once again, drawing energy out of the drum. Uh, using a throttle for your airflow, what you would do with this roast to roaster trap energy uh, in the drum is block out the flow of air, reduce the flow of air. I believe it really only ever is is an 80-20 split. Um, so there's not, you're never sealing off uh, the flow of air through the drum. But you're, you're reducing the flow of air through the drum, trapping the energy generated by these tiles. You're trapping that energy in the drum, promoting the roast. And at certain stages throughout the roast, opening up that throttle to allow more air flow through to create a gentle environment in the drum once again. Um, to help uh, prolong certain certain aspects of the roast uh, and aid development. Now, with the Probot style roaster, 
Then you have super powerful jets underneath the drum, heating the environment within the drum, charging that energy. And your airflow, if this were where you charge the drum, where you drop your, your charge in, the main blower is right here, right in the front of the drum, the main impeller, which is creating airflow through the drum. Well, with the impeller uh, at the front and top of the roaster, what that actually is doing is pulling the energy from the flames over the charge in the drum, uh, which is actually promoting the roast. So, and a lot of these have uh, adjustment aroma wheels, as they're called. Reducing the airflow at this point, uh, in this style of roaster, uh, you would actually slow down the roast as opposed to speed it up or promote it um, because this is what's pulling the energy over over the over the charge over the beams in the drum now with a lot of these style roasters where you have the impeller here and you're pulling the energy over the roast you do have a choke towards the back over here something to reduce the airflow and this is really important in terms of reducing moisture loss in your roast, uh, keeping it more at a, at a level where you can still develop body and, and dynamics in the cup. Now with this style of roaster, where you have the gas flames right underneath the, uh, right underneath the drum, right underneath the roasting chamber, these flames are incredibly adjustable and malleable. And all of your adjustments during the roast really are done to the energy source as opposed to the airflow. The airflow, you generally want to remain static because like I said, uh, choking off the airflow at this point would really dramatically slow down your roast, would slow down, uh, would restrict the amount of energy being pulled off the roast. And since you have so much responsiveness from the flames, um, making a, a, even a, the most subtle adjustment to the flames at this point, you will see a reaction to your roast profile. Now that does change from time to time with different batch sizes. Sometimes uh, you might make uh, subtle uh, adjustments to the airflow from time to time. Um, and that really comes down to the cup. I often think that. No, no. Like, really, you can't say anything. Oh, we're not supposed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Okay. Okay. Some drum roasters, where you do have the flames underneath, they have the impeller on top. This is where you load the coffee. They have the impeller on top, but it's at the back. Means that it's not so directly pulling energy over the charge. It, you're still pulling energy from the drum. And so you could say, if this were empty, you could say open up your drop gate. And so you'd be pulling air down through the top instead of through the drum, reducing the airflow. But the risk you run with doing something like that is running a high risk of scorching the beans and, and uneven development of the beans, especially at specific times during the roast. And so the entirety of the adjustments made during the roast are to the flames, which are yet once again really responsive to adjustments, and you can really tailor the roast to that. Uh, and so the major idea that I'm trying to get across with this video is basically less responsive energy combustion source for your drum roaster. You need uh, more efficient, more responsive airflow, because that's how you're going to affect the dynamic in the drum. Um, more responsive, more effective combustion energy source, uh, the airflow you're going to use differently uh, depending on where it is that the impeller is positioned in relation to the drum and in relation to that combustion source. Thank you for joining me. Chris Schooley, and this has been Roasting.